Renee, game two at the Garden. Uh, Knicks won. It's tied up 1-1. I'm still extremely scared of Trey. I'm still ex- extremely scared of Bogey. I want Clint Capella to get the fuck out of the way of the basket so the Knicks can score, <laughs> but the Knicks won. And it felt like, I, I got to tell you, there was a million times that I was just like, we're not going to win. Not only we're we not going to win, we're going to yeah. get swept. Um, but what are, your, what are your takeaways from this game? Um, you know, we lost. It is interesting because I have this calmness. We, yeah. we lost, and I felt like we played terribly bad. Like, in the second half, we couldn't make a shot. It was like a 30-8 to eight run at a certain point. And then, the, like, I was like, can we buy – a shot, a made shot for 200 from Aaron Rodgers, please. Like, I was, like, tweeting Aaron Rodgers, like, bro, you're Jeopardy now. Like, help me. <laughs> but we just couldn't buy a basket. So, I, I don't know. I just feel like after watching that game where we played really bad and it was still a close game, I just think that the, the Hawks should really win this series. I don't know. It's like I'm not even, like, arrogant or overly confident. No, no, but I get it. Just as I'm watching how the teams are producing points and how – when we were losing, we were still getting wide open shots. Like Danilo Gallinari missed so many wide open shots. Bogey missed wide open he's shots. He's thinking about. He's so thinking I don't about know. all this. I just have this like inner confidence now because it's like Hawks. We should really win. Gallo well, how do you feel about after that? The, Gallo's thinking about all the wonderful times that he had in MSG as a, as a young rookie coming up through the through the NBA. Uh, how do I feel? I I find it very I. I feel good because, one, because of the win, and two, because Tom Thibodeau has a reputation in the NBA, not just for playing his players a lot of minutes, but for not being adaptable, not right. not making the adjustments, for doing the things that he's done throughout the regular season and just doing them much, much harder during the playoffs, doubling and tripling down. Um, and he changed in the second half of that game. He, he didn't start... Uh, Alfred Payton, who's been having a horrible playoffs and a horrible several months, he went to his bench for much longer stretches than he normally yeah. does. He played rookie Obi Toppin, who, who made an impact out there. And then he closed the game with a lineup that I don't remember seeing, which is uh, Alec Burks and Reggie Bullock on the floor at the same time to create that yeah. spacing and, and also give you a more switchable lineup. He really went to these... Uh, this kind of uh, more uh, switchable lineups in the second half. And while the Hawks did miss a ton of open shots, I, I also feel like that that switching maybe gave them a different look and, and allowed uh, the Knicks to, uh, to a f- get the Hawks out of their comfort zone. And so I feel good about that because, you know, we were up against the wall. It was not looking good. And while Julius Randle had the exact same, basically, score – in terms of points, scoreline, as he did in game one, it looked different because, you know, Bullock and Burks gave him that extra spacing. He was able to, like, get the ball and go towards the basket, and while he wasn't really converting, he had a nice little Euro step. He was finding uh, people on the perimeter much quicker than he was in the first half, and it looked different. Now, I agree with you. In terms of, like, offense... I was going to ask you like, that. Like, what's your honest opinion? Like, because I've seen a lot of sports fans have changed their tune. People that don't have a dog in a fight. Of course, if you're yeah. for Atlanta, you're going to be for Atlanta. If you're for New York, you're going to be for New York. But I've seen the outlying fan bases chime in, and a lot of people are, like, and not saying it's going to be a blowout, but a lot of people, the way the series is going... It just feels like Atlanta's in control. Even when New York was coming back, everyone kind of was like, there was this nervous energy for the New York fans. Like, do we believe it? Because there feels like there's some type of, like you can see Atlanta's dominance. Like they're putting their imprint on the game more I'll, so. What are, what are your tell, thoughts moving forward? Yeah, I, I mean, to that point, I think what you're talking about is that, you know, the Hawks have an offensive identity. And they've been able to apply that identity throughout this series. The Knicks have a defensive identity, and they really haven't been able to apply that identity. Shouts to Nate McMillan, by the way. You know, people of myself included, are like, why can't we, much like Luka versus the Clippers, uh, the way they've been able to target Pat Pat Bev on switches, why can't we target uh, uh, Trey on switches? 
two reasons. The Knicks just don't have a natural playmaker like that who can find those things and, and be that general on the on the floor. You know, uh, Derek Rose is our best option at point guard, but he's a he's a grab it and go guy. Like he's a scorer yeah. first. He's not necessarily a playmaker. That's no knock on him. Um, but Nate has designed the scheme so that it's just hard to target <laughs> Trey like that. You know, like it, yeah. they try to get it, but the Hawks shade over. And then uh, the open guy is always the guy in the corner, so it's a, so it's hard for the Knicks to find it, and it's like uh, they're just very smart in the way they do it. It's it's uh, it, it's been hard to do that. So it, the Knicks just uh, they're winning these games because they're getting surprising scoring from different places. Exactly. And I'm hoping that some of that defense can pick up. But it does feel like. It really is one of those things where playing the Hawks, it's like, okay, just hold them off for a little more. Hold them off for a little more. Because you know. <laughs> that's the energy. We like, we can feel it. We like, can't online, score with them. We can't score with them. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. And so then, not to say, like I said, it still looks very closely tight. It's a close series. It's a 4-5 series. It's a close series. Yeah. We're just talking about things that you can see, trends you can see. New York was this dominant defensive team during the season. And now, even in the second half, we just missed a whole lot of shots. Like, I, like yes, the defense, the switching, I did see that affect some things. But, man, I mean, we missed a lot of shots. Is that because the defense picked up? You have to give them credit. Like, you know, but it's also, I don't know. I want to see the game three. Like, I'm excited to see game three. That's what yeah, I just I, said. I'm, su- I'm super excited. Go Knicks. Thank God. That was amazing. The, uh, the garden uh, The garden was turned up. But, oh, wait, side up. note. We can't spit on players. Like, that's, no, that's – like, I so, saw something. I saw that, too. I, I got to say, I need to see – and this is not – I'm not excusing anybody. I need to see the clip with the full face and the head so that I can see it clearly. And I know what happened. If that did happen, number one, lifetime ban from MSG. Easy. Number two, that's an assault charge. That's a – Post, like I, yeah like post covid you can't do that that's a charge that's legitimately like textbook if you look in the books that's assault you can't spit on a player come on you can't that's spit assault. on a person fans, you can't spit on the street fans are getting out of control though like yeah. even with what happened with Russell Westbrook and like that all those situations like be a fa- there's we have to start there's teaching lines. fan etiquette there's you know lines. like i've been talking to my friends about this fan etiquette is a real thing like you don't spit on the players i can't believe i have to say this out loud you don't split spit on the players you don't throw drinks on the players you don't call yeah, them do racist slurs you don't throw yeah, your no, popcorn do on the players like yeah, what are we do doing like, we happened. have to just like can we just be nice humans and i'm not saying be nice to the athletes like i don't mind the the f trey young trans yeah Who you cares? can like, but you that's know, what that's you're supposed sports. to do that's what you yeah that's what you're supposed to do you just don't spit on them. Like, yeah, I, don't, I can't believe we have to say that. Well, it's like it's like that conversation with the Super League that we had before where, uh, you know, people were like, man, I wish I wish fans in, in America were as turned up as, as European fans. I'm like, you kind of don't. You don't. Yeah, we, believe be me. careful what we wish for. <laughs> be careful what you wish for because you kind of don't want that. <laughs> 